welcome to Jimodism Total Nerdry Channel. We are here to do some electronics. Now, this is my first electronics video, and it's an absolute flop. <laughs> well, uh, I thought it was, you know, damn it, but, you know, this video shows you exactly how to do what the title says it uh, shows you what to do. It's just when I outset to do this project I intended to make a mixable RGB light so that I can mix three uh, you know the red, green and blue by potentiometers and uh, just have that kind of analog light mixing thing. And well I failed but not entirely and uh, well I managed to make a regular uh, light mixing circuit um, but uh, I can't mix all the three colors so I made a little funny you know halfway through thing and um, I'll show it to you in detail and also you know how to do this but first if you are wanting to make a mixable RGB light, well then I can tell you, you know, what you need to do. So when I kind of draw this, I kind of came to understand it before I tested it and I was like, oh shit, I bought the wrong ship. Um, so of course, um, this circuit, which I will show you later in the video, um, I, and it, there should be a link to the circuit in the description too, uh, this circuit works very good for one LED light of 12 volts to dim it or a LED light strip. Um, I'm using a LED light strip, or not one, actually three of them. Um, and uh, we little little limited, but you know if I'm really careful I can do this too. Amazing. Uh, 3.1 colors, no 2.1 colors I mean. I don't know, that's not the thing. Uh, anyways, uh, this little circuit, which is the one circuit I show, sh uh, showed you there, except it's not connected in all angles. Uh, for this uh, project we used the LM317 ship and the problem with my setup was that these RGB lights I have here, they do uh, have four inputs and one of the inputs are plus you know positive current um, of uh, yay of uh, 12 volts you know that's where the current is coming from and then they have um, three outputs uh, where the current is coming out from and actually the electrons are coming into because it's reverse so, uh, the ship I have, the LM317 ship, does control the current output. But I need, a, I need a negative ship, the one that controls the kind of, you know, uh, current input or basically controls the exit of the electrons rather than controls um, how much can come out of it. It's all reverse all the time, that's how it is in electronics, but, uh, you know, conventions and stuff. So, for this little project here, which uh, my MOX cable won't, uh, won't <laughs> reach, um, it uses just one potentiometer, one LN317, uh, two switches, and a heatsink. A disclaimer. This circuit might not work with all LED lights and will not work with all LED lights because this LED strip, this is a standard 12 volt LED strip and in this LED strip it has built-in resistors that will help limiting the current and the voltage. If you use free LED strips without any kind of limitation uh, it is to my understanding that you need to limit the current to not damage the LEDs. However, a light strip like this one has incorporated resistors which are there to keep
keep you from damaging the lead strip. And that might be necessary to not damage the LEDs in, uh, in this uh, configuration. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, it should, however, work with uh, a regular 12 volt LED strip with incorporated built in resistors, which you see along the line as small dots wired into it. It's the convention but you are completely responsible for the circuit you are creating. Anyways, uh, here you see the finished circuit looks like this. This is my setup. Here we have 12 volt plus goes into the input of the LM317. And uh, here we have a heatsink. The heatsink is needed if we have uh, LEDs, if our LED strip uses more than 0 0.98 watts, which they do because it gets hot and I really need this heatsink. And um, I have bars of, uh, of lead, which you'll see later a little bit, but uh, you know, approximately it's like one and a half meter of leads. Uh, and uh, well, here we have the 510 ohm, here we have the 5 kilo ohm pot. Here we have uh, 1 microfarad, 1 microfarad of capacitors to even out the current. We have the main switch there. And of course ground here and it's the current output, the plus, which is regulated. And the ground for both of these Molex connectors seem to be same. Because this is of course the Molex inside the PC. Um, and uh, here we have the Cyan Magenta uh, switch, so I can switch my light from being Magenta or Cyan. You can make this in any configuration, either having red, blue, green or any combination of those colors in the set amount, so you're pretty limited. But I mean you can make, uh, you can make uh, yellow light to and of course red, green and blue as it is, plus white of course. And then it just goes back there, so that's nice. Also keep in mind that, uh, you know, the max current the LM317 can take, the absolute max is 15 watts. If you have LED lights that together consume more than 15 watts, you'll burn this component whatever heat sink you have. So uh, it can only take that much. Keep that in mind. But uh, depending on the LED, RGB LED you are using, you might need to make a circuit that's actually not a voltage regulating circuit, but a current regulating circuit. Now this standard RGB LED strip, which I'm using, or LED bar thing, uh, does work very well with a current regulating circuit, but uh, it depends on the LED and uh, might be worth to check into that because as I said, some LEDs might get burned if they have too much current going through them and then they of course need a current regulating circuit. However, this type with integrated stuff uh, works very well at the voltage regulating circuit. Anyways, um, I might make the other circuit in the future uh, for my actual RGB control project where I will be making all the colors available with this LED. Uh, at that time, you might see me making the current regulating circuit. We'll see. I've, um, I'm talking to some competent people at Reddit and we'll see what is the best solution for that. But for this little simpler circuit, uh, voltage regulating works very well for this LED. Let's, uh, let's dive into it, how to make this little circuit. Uh, these work between a pretty wide range of voltages. Um, but some LED lights that only work when kind of kind of narrow span of voltages, they might need to have a current regulating circuit. Uh, the problem with that is that they usually develop more heat. So um, you know, I decided to make uh, a uh, voltage regulating circuit that is uh, very nice for me. I think it will work. I've understood that uh, I can use a LM317 chip 
I showed uh, you the circuit just after this. And uh, with that I should be able to make three of those circuits and be able to mix the light together. But first, before you make your circuit, you need to know what uh, source you need to have for them. Your light source, uh, power source. And uh, because this is 12 volt, standard RGB LED lights, um, I will use my uh, Molex connector pin. I, ba I will basically use one of the outputs from my uh, PCU, my computer power supply, and just take a cable from there. And uh, yeah, so we'll check out the light uh, source, uh, power source first. Now here we have my computer. This is my power supply. And here we have a Molex cable. As you can see here, we have uh, four pins. This one is uh, 5 volt and this one is uh, 12 volt. And of course, we before we connect stuff up, we need to check things. Both of these in the middle are though the uh, the ground, so that you know there. So the middle is basically the supply of electrons, but uh, uh, these two side ones do control the voltage. And it seems to be able that you can connect up either in uh, the ground, but um, actually these two on the side is uh, 12 or 5 volt. There we go. 5 volt, exactly. Uh, change this one for good measure. Maybe that's different standards. There we go. 12 volt. Perfect. Then we know. This side is really the 12 volt side. Good. That's where we're getting our power from. Alright, so uh, let's go again to uh, the real circuit we're making. So we'll begin with uh, putting down our LM317 here. So this is the in and this is the out and this is the adjustment. I hope you can see that. Uh, in any case here we have our power supply, plus here, negative there. And again, we'll put ground here to the negative side, of course. Then we have a little interesting thing here. Let's just paint the rest here. This is, of course, out. This is in. And R1, resistor 1, as in the last diagram, will still be uh, a... Uh, let's paint it here. Tut, 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 tut. That will be a, uh, you know, a non-variable resistor. That will be a uh, constant resistor right there. We'll have a variable resistor indeed. So we'll take this line here and we'll paint a variable resistors. There are a little bit different conventions of how to make a variable resistor. This is R2. And, uh, but I'll use this one, this little arrow here, representing a little sliding scale, which you can put it on. And we'll just connect it up there. So, this is R2. And you can limit this by basically, you know, sliding this across the resistor and it will basically decide how many um, ohms it will output. In any case, uh, now I did not paint it in a very nice way here <laughs> because of space. Uh, but you'll see, excuse me for the crossing lines here, but you'll see many other circuits connecting these two, this one and this one, ignore this little cross section here, but this one and this one may be connected in some circuits. And if these are connected, it means that if this pot here, this potentiometer variable resistor, it's called a potentiometer, if this would fail, this little basically sliding thing that goes around a, um, a material that I think I think it might be graphite actually, it slides across, same as in, in your uh, uh, pencils. But uh, if that would break, it will go back and default to the maximum resistance that this R2 offers. If this one isn't connected, 
as it isn't in uh, you know my design then it will just um, go back to the minimum voltage which will be in this case 1.25 volts it should be anyways um, you might wonder R1, R2 what values should we put on them? well fortunately to this voltage regulating circuit there is actually a very nice uh, equation that we'll have which I'll write down here so voltage out is equal to 1.25 volts times 1 plus R2 divided by R1 that's a nice R plus 0 0.05 milliamps times R2 this value is usually so small because it's 0 0.05 not ampere milliamps this, you, this value is usually so small that most people calculating simply just exclude this part of the equation but if you have some weird values keep out you know watch out I mean <laughs> you might need to add this in so you know just so you have that in mind and as I said you can see in this equation which kind of bugged me a little bit first before I understood how DLM317 works um, it doesn't you know have anything to do with the voltage in no nothing voltage in is nowhere which I thought was very weird but actually it isn't because this LM317 uh, does regulate voltage compared to the input voltage so it means that it can input it can output any voltage from 1.25 volts to 37 volts just like that um, while uh, while you know having any of those values as input voltage so as long as the you know um, input voltage is higher than the output voltage uh, by a marginal one point uh, 25 I believe it was um, in any case it will output a little less it will always output a little less than the input voltage of course in any case we can do some different calculations and um, if you have a too high of a value on R2 it will be harder to <laughs> you, you will get a very little part of the pot usable so um, what you want to do is you need to define the maximum voltage you want to have what's the maximum voltage you want to have well in my case the maximum voltage I want to be able to output would be 12 volts of course that's my input voltage uh, so if I would want to output 12 voltage I would actually rather have 13 volts and a little more than 13 volts as input anyways while this equation is fun and all there is also a web page that uh, I can link into the description which also can ca calculate this for you because if you want a certain output voltage then you need to you know calculate the ratio and do remember that the R1 uh, does need to be a value between 100 and 1000 ohms so you know keep that in mind in any case doing some different uh, calculations I found out and also adapting my, my calculations to uh, what was available to purchase of course I can't purchase any value of resistor and I don't want to collect a lot of them in 
<laughs> in serious to you know get the exact value uh, I'll just you know I'll just you know it doesn't have to be super exact but it's nice if it's decently exact so according to my calculations I'll get a voltage out of 13.5 around volts if I have a yeah, let's just write in the entire equation here 1.5 volt 1 plus uh, if R2 is equal to 5000 and R1 is equal to 510 so yeah uh, like I did try to uh, instead have the resistor value of 500 but uh, I couldn't find that so but that you know no 550 I mean what's uh, what I wanted because then we would get an output of uh, 12.6 which would, would be better I thought but uh, this is good enough and my input is uh, 12 volts anyway so it won't be able to output 13.5 volts of course but if I had a higher um, input voltage you know this might cause problems in any case, the output voltage will always be lower than the input voltage, which I'm sure you do understand by this uh, time. Anyways, the R2, which is the 5000 one, doesn't have so much limitations, uh, which means this is the one we can kind of uh, play around with a little more, since this is limited from 100 to 1000 ohm. Uh, so it kind of depends on uh, what uh, what uh, output you want to have. Well, uh, so that's that's how to uh, calculate how what values you should have on the resistors. Um, you basically need to start at what is the maximum output voltage you'll have, and then you need to adapt the potentiometer to be able to output the maximum value. Uh, according to the R1 with uh, that needs to have a value between 100 and 1000 ohm. Anyways, I hope that makes sense. Well, before understanding how the LM317 really worked, I tried to have um, a little circuit that was had R1 to be a value of 240 ohms and R2 to be a value of 10,000 ohms very much and you know that circuit would technically be able to output like 53 volts um, but of course that's more than the ship can handle and it's much more than I even have an input but that was what I was imagining about of course this circuit would work too I found this circuit some other person was using it on, on YouTube uh, but the problem with having that circuit is that a very small portion of the potentiometer will be useful so these are the potentiometers I've ordered them and they have arrived which is very nice so if this was like a 100,000 uh, <laughs> uh, potentiometer I would only be able to like you know use this little part while the rest of the turning movement would do nothing because I can't output more than I have an input voltage and I would if I would have more than input voltage I would basically be able to dim the light this little portion and then just fry it at the rest <laughs> which would be sad oh well well um, I will now draw the full diagram which we will be using because because there are some small portions I didn't tell you about so um, you know for simplicity so I will make this one more proper and this uh, this circuit I will also upload as a picture in the description or something so you can reach it maybe on the I don't know Twitter or whatever uh, something okay so I try to draw this one proper here very nice and there we have in out adjustment pin there and then we have it go all the way here to our power source and this is the negative side and this one goes this this is ground here very nice 
and this we'll need to add some space here just perfect go straight there very nice and this one the output continues here and it goes down there because here we'll actually have our LED lights. Now I will just paint a symbol for a simple single LED light, so excuse me for that, which is our diode, our LED there. Uh, of course this represents the whole, uh, the whole lot of them, you know, all of these ones which have built-in uh, resistors along the way and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, it's very hard to see, but there is super, 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 super small text there which tells you what voltage your, uh, your uh, uh, LED is using. And don't blame me if you throw your LEDs on the ground and they somehow broke. I don't think they will, but, you know. <laughs> Alright, and that goes around there. Here we have R1. R1, here we go. And that one goes into adjustment pin. And here we have R2, which goes down there. I'll just write R1, R2, and this is the potentiometer. So we'll connect it up by connecting R1 to it like that. And you can connect this if you want to, as explained before. If this is connected, uh, then it means that if this connection would break, it will output the maximum voltage possible uh, by limiting of the R2 resistor. Um, or if you don't connect this, it means that it will output the minimum amount of... What, what I added here, from uh, that's different from the last uh, thing, is capacitors, which we'll add here. There we have one capacitor, I'll draw them out here, I'll just take them down there. And we'll have capacitors here, and a capacitor there. And uh, this might be polar or not, but, uh, you know, if they are, be sure to connect them correctly. Um, in any case, um, the capacitors I'll use have the, have the capacitance of 100 microfarads, 100 microfarad. What these will do is when we change the current, um, both if the power supply, the input voltage, um, is little, you know, little varied, a little bit sketchy. It will smoothen it out by charging when there is a little too much and discharging when there is a little too little. So we'll get better consistency in power deliverance. Because this is direct current, it doesn't fluctuate. Uh, no current will pass these capacitors. They will just, you know, sit at uh, the electrons, will sit at one end here and uh, kind of want to jump over to this side, but they can't, they just stand there and err, kind of, <laughs> yes. And uh, when there is a fluctuation, they will kind of escape and, you know, we and the current, you know, will do the same. So they kind of balance there. And, uh, you know, current goes this way, electrons goes the other way, it's weird. But uh, that's how it is. And uh, on this side also, it will keep the fluctuations of the uh, regulating circuit a little bit more stable. If you kind of, I don't know, uh, do weird things with this one, it won't, uh, it won't mess so much with the power supply for the LED. So if you will have flickering problems and you didn't add uh, capacitor, it might be nice. And 100 microfarads. Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't have a nice uh, calculation of exactly how long it ta takes to discharge uh, considering the um, power consumption of my LED, because I don't know the power consumption of my LED, 
but uh, some folks that read it that know about the electronics thought that uh, 100 microfarads should be good. When you buy a capacitor, keep in mind that uh, the capacitors need to have, uh, they need to be able to take the current. So they are rated for different voltages, which uh, is written on them. And uh, so let's open this up here. I bought a lot of them. They're really cheap, so well. And here we can see 100 microfarads. And they're rated for 16 volts. I don't know if that's visible, but they're rated from, for 16 volts. So uh, though I can use them in this circuit, which I did check. Uh, these are my 510 ohm resistors. So there we have them. Very nice. And here we have, I'll need to cut this open. These are the <laughs> LM317, which we talked so much about. And here we have the seat sink. So if we need to uh, put them against the heat sink, we just put a screw there and keep them tight against an alum aluminum plate or something. And uh, I don't know if they say, well, I look at the uh, kind of explanation of which pin is what, because it's not in adjustment out, it's weirder, if I remember it correctly. Well, anyways, uh, we shall connect this up and uh, this, I'll, I'll write in the values here, by the way, just so we have them. So it's 12 volts, and uh, this R1 is 510 ohms, this port is 5 kilo ohms, and the LEDs are rated for 12 volts as well, we can write in there. Well, then I think we have the essential value. So uh, let's go on and build a little circuit. All right, so this is why you draw wiring diagrams. And uh, don't do like me, because I connected it and then I tested it, and uh, something burnt a little bit. I think the components are fine, but uh, now we will check that it's actually properly connected. So we have our diagram here before we connect it again and see how it works. So there is the LM, the uh, leftmost pin is the adjustment pin, the middle pin is the volt out pin, voltage out pin and the right pin is the voltage in pin. So voltage in is connected to the power source straight there. We excluded the capacitors here, by the way, but <clears throat> they shouldn't really change anything, like obvious. So there we have it there, perfect. And for voltage out, we have that going to a resistor, as well as directly to the LED. That's nice. And the resistor is going into the adjustment pin and that's how it's supposed to be. The adjustment pin is also going to uh, the pot there and the, uh, let's see here, perfect and then we have the other side of the pot, it's going down there, perfect and that is going, is being connected to the screen cable through to the ground side of the cable which it's supposed to be connected that's good and it's also connected to the LED okay everything seems to be connected there we go whoops wrong there we go we have a weak shine there and if we connect it to the pot here I think it's working. So if we just have it there. Here we can see very faint glow. And we can turn it up to maximum brightness. The principle seems to be working though. But this is why you have or like wiring diagrams. So you're kind of knowing what you're doing. We can feel, oh yeah. We need a heatsink for the LM17. 
we can feel that. Well, good to know. Let's uh, get on with the heatsink and uh, basically solder this up. Alright, the first uh, little version is actually soldered and uh, connected to the battery though. So if we connect it here, well you can see the shine at the side there. We can then dim it. Nice. Here we see the potentiometer, like that. So I solder the cables to it and I have the capacitors to the back side here. Um, one capacitor goes to source positive and the other capacitor goes to uh, current output positive. So basically the same positive that the LED gets uh, and this one stays with source uh, power to stabilize that. Here we have the uh, the LM317 uh, which is uh, soldered here, which this is the input and I put a little uh, sleeve on there too and we have the output in the middle connected with the uh, 510 resistor that goes to this side and it has a small little brown cable that goes to the potentiometer. Um, so I hope that makes sense. It, I mean, it looks like a mess when you solder it together, but that's, that's exactly why this is so enormously useful. It's really nice to have, have a nice uh, circuit diagram. Then it makes sense. When you have this written down, uh, you can just lead the cables and connect them and everything makes sense. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention before is that the potentiometers you buy, the pots, uh, also called, or variable resistor, uh, these need to be linear, or they don't need to be linear, but if they're logarithmic, like the ones used for volume control, then you will really only be able to use a little, little, little side of it to uh, get any uh, sound. So you want to buy a linear one, and the linear ones are marked with a B, um, I think it's visible B5K which is linear for B and 5K for 5000 ohms aka 5 kilo ohms Alright, here we have the Molex connection uh, put here, it even has a little nice uh, side you can open so we'll basically solder the uh, the wire to this both sides, oh god, now um, I hit the plastic a little bit, that smells bad. Shit happens. Okay, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm not the world champion, uh, I don't have the current world championship in soldering. But, uh, ooh, I smell. But I want them to sit properly, you know. Do the best I can. Anyways, that should be good. Yeah, they're shut. And now this also have a fan connector. Uh, so I can just close this up again and I can actually connect fans to this uh, if I want to as well to the same connection. Well, that should be those. So let's move on. All right, little uh, middle check here. Um, now we have uh, connected the computer uh, power supply and we can now adjust this uh, LED like very faint to off, to super faint, to full power. Nice. All right, so uh, I made two of them. They're done, so I'm going to show you how to do this uh, last one here. Begin with just gently dragging out the uh, pins to an angle, and uh, then we need to get the components. So here we have the resistor. Get that this that into a nice angle. All right, so I twisted a cable and a resistor in an angle like this. And you might wonder why I decided to keep the entire thing. 
and that is because the one thing you have to be careful about when soldering is to not fry your components. If they get too hot they will break unfortunately. And also what I have here is a little sleeve here. That's uh, optional but I put it on so when I've soldered this I can easier, uh, I can more easily um, kind of protect it to touch other comp uh, you know, other uh, conductors which will make the whole thing not very good. And I'm not an expert at soldering because, you know, I have only did it a little before and uh, sold uh, I've done some good soldering I have, but not electronics. Um, so I hope that didn't fry it. It's not perfect there, so I'm just going to put this over there and part like that and just nice now it sits there and the middle one is the output this is the adjustment pin and this is the input pin so if we put this like that again we can mount it there because at this side we want to solder a little cable which will go to the pot, the potentiometer. Alright, so uh, what we need to do here is here we have the capacitors capacitors have polarity, some have, and the long one is positive, the short one is negative. Uh, these capacitors, like most capacitors, by the way, um, actually don't have polarity, so I'll just connect them up with their proper polarity, better safe than sorry, but uh, from what I understand, uh, for this type of non-polar capacitor it shouldn't actually matter. Anyways, um, they will be connected up to the middle, to the middle will also connect up uh, <coughs> a blue cable for the blue light and black cable for the uh, negative power supply which will go to the blue one but uh, yeah th this is just a meeting point from the, from for, for them as you see in the diagram the capacitors will later connect up to the sources of power um, and to this side will just connect up this brown cable So the difference between this and um, the circuit we will build is that I actually built three of these circuits but in this little contraption there is only one of these circuits implemented because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video um, I thought I could mix all these three circuits to make a mixable RGB light. Unfortunately my circuit does limit the current on the positive side and my LED light is uh, you control it by controlling the negative side. Um, so it's kind of reversed, that's why it doesn't work. Uh, so what I've done is I took one of these circuits, one of the LM, uh, LM chips, I screwed it to this heatsink we have here and then I just set up these uh, uh, levers this lever is on and off, which you can see it's the upper left one uh, um, lever in the diagram. And this lever is the one closer to the LED lights, which uh, switches between magenta and cyan. And that's because how I mixed up the colors. Uh, so that's, that's basically that. That's the only thing that's uh, different from the circuit we built. Uh, so we just added in two 
uh, switches basically and we didn't connect them together because I never showed that because I realized it wouldn't work so it's just um, added two uh, levers and also um, a heatsink that's all basically heatsink is just screw it on um, with a screw and it's there works very well and here folks is the end result on off switch you can see there is a tiny delay, that's because of the, potent, uh, the uh, capacitors. And we can turn it up to pink. Now red reacts on a little lower voltages, so we might need to have some input there to kind of uh, balance it out so we get pink all the way to kind of boost the blue a little bit. Yeah, and there we go, full power. And then we have this little switch here, bam. And it's the same, green reacts on lower voltages. So we have a little span of different uh, Xeon colors there. And if we're really careful, we can have it on blue. <laughs> but uh, that's what we can do with this. Uh, switch it between two set color combinations, uh, basically primary color uh, combinations, uh, or primary in one sense. I can switch between Cyan and Magenta, basically. And yeah, so there we have it. Um, if we take a little look here, this little blue cable doesn't do anything. It's the black cable here in the front that goes to the same. Uh, it's easier to look at a diagram to kind of understand what it is. But here's the heatsink, which doesn't really get hot. But if I disconnect it and only have the ship free, it does get the ship get hot. So it's obviously obviously doing something. Well, I think it turned out pretty cool, and of course, uh, I will do like a final thing uh, <laughs> when I <laughs> buy the negative LM317, so that I actually can control the uh, volt output of these rather than the input, as these respond to output which is basically basically we are sending electrons into red, green or blue directly uh, why my original setup um, didn't work of um, having three of these uh, circuits kind of bundled together oh well this works pretty neatly and um, I'll show you a little picture of um, how the diagram um, you know, how, how what exactly how this is set up and I made a little extension cable from the Molex which you saw earlier and then I made a little extension cable to the uh, RGB which you can see kind of these uh, off camera but it's not hard in any case I hope you enjoyed this little video and thanks a lot for watching Gmodism Total Notary Channel officially signing out